everyone, and welcome back to my Asteroid Defense Series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. And in the previous episode, we set three missions in motion, three missions to the moon. The first mission has already landed Ed Ball Kerman at the East Crater, and he's gotten valuable science from that, and is now on his way back to Kerbin. And so we're going to have to make sure we... Uh, catch up with him, uh, guide him through the transition between the two spheres of influence at around 1 hour and 33 minutes from now. The second mission is in orbit around the moon, and that will be James Kerman. And the final mission is en route still. It has not arrived at the moon. It'll have its encounter in 1 hour and 23 minutes, that's important obviously. And then uh, we'll get into its circular moon orbit at its periapsis. So the order of operations for this uh, time is first let's get this mission through its uh, sphere of influence change and plot its uh, burn for orbit. Then get uh, Mooner 2 out of the Mooner sphere of influence and get ready to re-enter Kerbin's atmosphere. And then finally, uh, do the... Well, it's not finally. We're going to have a lot to do in this episode. So uh, then get Moon 4 into orbit. Then land Moon 3. Then uh, I guess probably uh, get Moon 2 back onto the surface. And then land Moon 4. Well, Moon 3 might be able to launch before we land Moon 4. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. So the first things first, uh, Mooner 4, let's plot its, uh, its orbital, uh, pl uh, plot its orbit, and the beauty is that now with the new maneuver node system, I trust that when I plot its orbit and leave, it will, the maneuver will still be there. So, okay, let's go to it. Oh, here we are, lights and everything, Harbury Kerman was the guy, and there's the moon. Let's let's just uh, get past this little point here. I'm always worried that uh, if I don't guide them through the maneuver nodes manually, uh, they'll end up going into... I mean, I don't think that'll happen, but uh, just flinging off into their own little trajectory. Okay, so here it is. And let me just make that little maneuver. Because I do want to see whether this whole new maneuver system works well, reliably, before I rely on it for more critical missions. So we're getting, gonna get into a nice tight orbit. That's good enough. Okay, so that's the plot. And we have him there. Now, let's switch back to Mooner 2. This is currently what Mooner 2 looks like, and remember we've brought the GUI experiment info back into the command pod. So we've got some stored data here. Mystery GUI observation from East Crater, EV report, and surface sample. Okay, keep all data, keep all data, keep data. Okay, so that's, that's all there. Now I guess we could do a crew report, or no that's not worthwhile here. I, I'm surprised I didn't do one on the surface. That was a big mistake. Um, I don't think I logged temperature data here, did I? Oh, well, that one already has one. Log temperature data. That can't be done right now. Okay, well, whatever. I think uh, we're, we're good to go, I guess. Ed Ball's looking worried or confused, but that shouldn't be a thing. Oh, well, I can see why he's confused. Where's where's her line? Hmm. Oh. Oh. Did we just, like, just cross into Kerbin's Sphere of Influence? Was that why? I guess maybe that's the thing. Well, he's happy now. Okay, that must have been it. Okay, I think uh, 30 kilometers is plenty good for the return. We'll have to pop off the service module. Uh, in the atmosphere. It doesn't have much juice in it left anyway. Uh, because the parachute won't be able to hold all this. However, all the way into re-entry, there's no reason why we have to dump this. It's only it's only at the end when we have to release the parachute that we need to worry about it. 
Okay, anyway, uh, he's on his way back on the expected trajectory. All right, uh, next uh, order of business is to make sure Mooner 4 actually gets into orbit. I, I was hoping that we get more of a more of a brownish tone to it, but it's it's a little bit orangey. Uh, very, I mean, I was hoping more sepia, but this is a little bit brighter. Okay, anyway, um, I mean the lights, of course. Now that we can color the lights, I'm going to have to be picky about that. Color code our missions. Okay. Got to make sure electric charge is always all right, too. Because, well, all the lights are on. Oh, there it goes. Hmm. Obviously, the key is that uh, we have to have enough electric charge to cover the dark side of the place. Otherwise, things get complicated. But we'll be land making a landings on the bright side, so at least there's that. Right, well, I don't see why we can't start things off now. Arbury? Not really as much lighting as I'd like, actually. Um, on the bright side, <laughs> bright side, um, it, uh, the spotlight should help with the landing. There's really only this one light that's uh, trying to illuminate the body of this. And again, that's because of electric charge consumption. I didn't want to overdo it. Uh, the key is to illuminate the ground on landing. Okay. That's fine. And so, now I think we go to Mooner 3 and try and make a landing somewhere with it. Let's switch to Mooner 3. Okay, here we are. We've got some sunlight here. And... Let's see, we have Ed Ball over here, uh, well this is about to get into, uh, well, let's see if we can hit this one. Seems a little bit dark, but, I mean, this one would be easier. Oh no, that that's the other guy's orbit. Um, doesn't look like there's any other easy target for our orbit. Yeah, this will have to do. We'll hope that the landing lights are enough. And it looks like we have to get uh, started on a burn fairly quickly. It's... Yeah. Okay. Uh, node in 51 minutes. Oh, it's the other way around. Darn it. Uh, this this one is going around this way. Gotta remember that. Maybe we should just do a Midlands thing. Because we gotta hit all this stuff. Yeah. I think that's that's more reasonable. Let's burn over here. Oh, not that much. I mean, yeah, we can uh, get all the information about the craters, but we have to know what the moon is like without the craters, right? I mean, uh, otherwise we have no basis for comparison. So we do need non-craterish area, something that hasn't been impacted by a crater, so that we can have a basis for comparison to see what asteroids are really like. Anyway, that's my logic and I'm sticking to it. Mm. So we're gonna try and hit uh, this area here, I think. Try and do that. Maybe uh, let's have it a little bit steeper. Don't like having it too shallow. Okay, I think... Oh, uh, maybe an inclination will be necessary here. Right. 
All right, so that'll be a retro burn. Okay, so yeah, let's just do it here. And let's get the gear down now. Okay, nice. Nice to see the foot pads all illuminated like that. Okay. Hmm, start our descent burn here, I think. Still think we need to go a little bit further north. Okay, I think we gotta hit this area. That's good. Okay, it's all down from here. Question as usual is how high the train is. So, so I'm kind of keep an eye on. Okay, well, let me IVA. Um, what does that say? I think just above a thousand. Okay, so I'm glad I'm looking for uh, two thousand on the uh, two thousand meters. A little bit over two thousand meters. I'm gonna just hold on to this stage for a while. Okay, I think I should let go of this stage at this point. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, hey, 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 hey. D why, why, why all the buffeting? Hey, don't do that. Just be calm, be calm. Whoa, it's very twitchy for some reason. Much more so than the previous lander. Okay, we are landed. So despite some weird... I don't know why we were tilting all over the place like that on landing, but we're down now. We're all nice and safe. Temperature scan. Okay, keep that data. Observe mystery goo. Goo seems to be less dense here from the Midlands. Keep the data. Uh, let's do a crew, crew report before I forget. Okay, Midlands. And EVA, please. Now, can I get the goo from here? Yeah, I can collect the data. Yeah, remove the data. Okay. 
Okay. Do your business first. Take surface sample. The darker midland surface appears to be made of basaltic rocks. Okay. EVA. And searching for carbon as usual. Keep the data. And finally, plant the flag. Okay, so uh, James at the Midlands. And I'll put the date. Mission two of three for Kerbin. Okay. Well done, James. And I uh, let's. I, I don't think well, we'll get him into orbit around the moon. We don't need to get him uh, trajectory to home yet. I don't think. It's better to get them in orbit rather than uh, have them all head for home at the same time. Uh, have them have them head for home when we're trying to make landings. Okay, so that's all stowed. Yeah, I guess uh, it's time to head up then. Lunar 2 is still on its way. Alright. Alright, aim for 90 degrees as usual. And uh, we should have plenty of fuel. Tons of fuel. Alright, go! No, no, just, just up. We can pretty much go horizontal at this point. Okay, let me just go to Apoapsis to circularize this. And then we'll keep him up here while we do uh, Lunar 4. They are now going in opposite directions, of course, because of the way we came in on all the missions, actually. Uh, no, no, this way. Okay, very good. Mooner 3. But there is one other piece of business I want Mooner 3 to take care of, and that's we never did a Mystery Goo observation in uh, low orbit near the moon. So let's keep that data. And I'm going to have James EVA. going to have him climb down the ladder a bit and collect that data. Remove the data. Yeah, in space near the moon. All right. Get back up. Mm. And port. Uh, nope, nope. Port. Alright. Everything should be in the top module. Uh, I'm sure we've done a thermometer reading here, but let me just double check. Oh. Okay. Oh. All right, well, let's just keep that. I'm sh I guess it's in Lunar 2, and it's just because Lunar 2 hasn't arrived yet. We'll get a duplicate of that. All right, so final mission to land, and I think we have enough time. Final mission to land will be Lunar 4, so let's switch to it now. And here it is. That's, that's probably uh, Lunar 3 right there. Okay. Last thing. So what did we want? Oh, we wanted him to hit this crater, definitely. And he's coming around this way, so let's make the maneuver here. And let's add some inclination to it. This is basically the same craft as before, so close to the same landing profile, except I'll dump the 
extra tank a little bit earlier because I don't I don't want to have that jitteriness that we saw with the last mission happen here again. Well, if it happens here again, I don't want it to jeopardize the mission. Let me put it that way. Okay. So there it is, and let's give it a little bit more time. Okay, nice to get the little check mark. Uh, it's like uh, you earned your grade or something. All right, just confirmation that yes, this is good enough. Okay, here's the point where I want to do retro burning. So taking a look at, I guess I want to land around here actually. So it's going to be pretty straight down too. I guess I could land over there. Yeah, I guess I'll, I'll land over here. Hope that's not too bumpy. Mm, come on, frame rates. So I guess it's over here somewhere? Oh. Something... I don't know. I think it's just graphical issues. There are some... Some little monuments and stuff on, uh, on the moon. That we can hunt for at a later time. When we are not being threatened by asteroids. But, uh, but I don't think they're here. Good to keep an eye out for them though, I guess. I don't really pay much attention to that. Let's not get too close. Actually, I want to go a little further than that. Oh. This is going to be an interesting approach. Yep. Time to kill some horizontalness. It's very twitchy here. I don't have my gear down yet. Hmm. Let's get the gear down. Quickly IVA. About 1,100 or so. Alright. So about the same height as the previous crater. We aren't in the same crater, right? Yeah. Anyway. Okay, we're pretty much spent on this stage anyway. Let me shut it down. Okay, well this one was a better transition. I don't know why I had trouble last time. Come on, Harbury, get this thing down.
Okay, we are on the surface of the moon. So, observe mystery goo. Northwest crater, 40 science. Well, actually, crew report would be good. Yep, 20 science there. Thermometer, 32 science. And finally, Harbury, it is your turn to go. So, uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, flying low over? No. Just, uh, that's still in space over the moon. You could play that trick with uh, Kerbin sometimes, though. Anyway, uh, collect data. Yeah, remove that. And just plop down, please. Very nice. So far, our dismounts have been pretty good. Okay, Harbury. Surface sample. Same as the previous crater. Or, uh, yeah, I think so. You start to say something dramatic and poignant about the plight of Kerbalkine in this grand universe only to be cut off by random radio chatter that the situation is nominal. Indeed. And, uh, that's probably one of the better ones. Alright, plant flag. So, this is Harbury at the northwest crater. And uh, is there space for the date? Sort of. Okay. Uh, moon armada one complete. Now, let's all get home. Quite right. All right, jetpack. Grab. Up we get and board. So let's get Harbury back into orbit. And uh, same sort of thing as before. Go this way. Gear up. Okay, somehow we start spinning. Does SAS not like me anymore? I'm not too sure why I started tumbling at all. Strange. Okay, stop that. Stop. Jeez. Maybe it's Harbury. I don't know, we were, we were getting into a pretty nice orbit right there on a single burn instead of having to burn that apoapsis, but no, something strange had to start happening. I don't think that's quite safe on this end, I might hit something. Okay, that's fine. So, what we've got going here is Lunar 2 on its way back. So, let's let's send Lunar 3 on its way back. We'll keep Lunar 4 in Lunar Orbit for now. So, Lunar 3, and then uh, we'll bring Lunar 2 back into the atmosphere and to the surface. Then, then we'll set Lunar 4 back on its trip to Kerbin. Alright, so let's do this. Okay, James. James is all ready to go back home, and quite rightly. So we'll burn somewhere over here. And as usual, we want something below 30. But not too far below 30. That'll do. Got plenty of fuel on this one for this. 
James made the best descent, really. Most efficient this, the descent, though it was a little bit dodgy at one point. Okay, all our celestial bodies in a row, and here we go. Okay, a touch on the other side will make things right. There we go. And let's get him out of the Moonar Sphere of Influence. James on his way back. Uh, heading tail first. Um, but yeah, I guess that's appropriate. Uh, his tiny little window will be able to see the surface of the moon. Waving goodbye. All right. Okay. Oh no. Oh no. I misjudged where Mooner Two was. It passed right around Kerbin. Oh, it took it, it took a much longer for Mooner Three to get out into uh, the into Kerbin's sphere of influence than I thought, and Mooner Two went right through the atmosphere. Okay, this is a problem. We'll have to keep uh, Mooner Three, uh, uh, Mooner Four around the moon while we handle this. It would seem like. Like, uh, actually, Lunar 3 is going to be the first one to descend into Kerbin's atmosphere now. Good thing Lunar 2 is on rails, because uh, uh, otherwise uh, we would have lost it because I wasn't able to pop the parachutes. Let's just see that everything's alright over on Lunar 2. And things are going so flawlessly. Edball, why did you have to do such things? Uh, well, of course, it was just my bad timing. Obviously, uh, even though it was over here and it looked like there was plenty of time... Uh, this is the very quick part of the whole orbit, right? Um, people underestimate. Uh, on the trip to the moon, like for the Apollo missions, uh, they spend a lot of time on the, if you'd like, the moonar half of it. And very little time on the Earth side of it. So, because that's the quick part of it. So I just underestimated how long, uh, I mean, overestimated how long he had to periapsis instead of really keeping a close track on that. But anyway, thankfully, uh, I mean, you, you could think of it in a number of different ways. I mean, it's fair enough because, really, uh, Ed Ball should have been able to pop his own parachute and I think he would have been fine anyway. Uh, he doesn't have any f much fuel left and it's mostly empty stuff. So uh, maybe a little bit of a hard landing, but nothing he wouldn't be able to survive. But, yeah, um, we... Uh, technically took advantage of a Kerbal, a, 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 a foible of Kerbal, if you will. So let's let's handle Mooner 3 first then. So it turns out that James gets to go back home first, and that's fair enough. Let's see how things are going. 30, should be fine. Let's do this. Ooh, uh, is, this is where the KSC is. I don't think we're going to land on it, but at least we can hit this ocean, huh? That would be good. I should preserve this uh, for information on how to return to the KSC after a moon mission. That'd be nice. But, uh, I mean, that'd be tough, too, because there's the rotation of the planet itself to think about, and it's all very complicated. Okay, we are now in the atmosphere. And being in the atmosphere, I'm going to decelerate. I'm going to burn off what speed I have to bring my apoapsis down, you see. And actually, I should keep my periapsis a little bit up. I mean, this is really only uh, important if you're... Uh, doing deadly re-entry uh, using that mod, uh, which I'm obviously not in this case, is stock. But it's good to keep your good habits up as far as things go. Okay, so that's the rest of our fuel, so we won't be dumping any fuel anywhere. We will pass over the KSC. There it is. 
and I'll dump the service module into the ocean. So we'll wait for that. Let's just time up a little bit. Okay, I think we can prepare to dump the service module. Actually, we'll do it uh, later. Right now, it's liable to collide with us. Okay, so I think it's okay to uh, inject the service module now. Indeed. And ooh, a little bit of a shakiness here. Why is that? Uh, let me turn SAS off and deploy the parachutes. I didn't like that shakiness. SAS has not been my friend today. Uh, it's been a little bit dodgy at some points. So, so far this mission took 19 hours. If we look in, we're 10 days into our uh, our entire save and uh, into the whole asteroid defense thing. So, we still haven't really... Oh, I'll just keep it to this one. Uh, we still haven't encountered our first asteroid yet, but, but that's coming. And we've gotten a lot of science done uh, in order to uh, make that encounter worthwhile and productive in terms of being able to manipulate the asteroid. I mean, uh, we haven't gotten the claw or anything, but we've gotten a lot of essential technologies. Okay, so bringing James back down and we'll see how much science he collected. All right, James managed to get 328 science, but let's not dwell over this. We have other missions to take care of. Let's try and get Mooner 2 back. All right, Mooner 2 is quite far away from Kerbin, as you can see. And, uh, but, but uh, its periapsis should still be the same, so it's still, it's still okay. Let's, let's get, uh, let's get going. Let's not pass right through the point this time. Ooh, frames not very good right now. Computer is not a happy, happy camper today for some reason. Okay, but it's funny. Yeah, frame rates overall have been very good. Uh, but every now now and then I hit this little cluster of lag that slows everything down to a crawl. It's very interesting. Okay, I think this is all nice and neat right here. I think as usual I'll I'll burn off the remainder of the fuel. Okay. And otherwise I'll do things similar to the way I did before. Oh, I brought the periapsis. Oh, that's a problem. I didn't want it so steep, you see. Oh, that's interesting. In that case, let me dump the can f can now. Yeah. Sort of a high G-force re-entry compared to some of our other missions. Okay, preparing. Ooh. Okay, parachute.
Okay, parachutes open. Parachute, really, just one. And after creating the one major fault in our mission so far, Eval Kerman has returned safely back to Kerbin. Let us recover the vessel. And we find that he has brought back 237 science. Not too sure why he brought back less. Got a lot of temperature scans. Well, he didn't do the crew report. Huh. Can't really see anything else that's missing. Though, uh, James, I think, did an extra mystery goo uh, near the moon. He did the near the moon mystery goo experiment, so maybe that was it. Alright, uh, it's Harbury time, and Harbury will be returning back to Kerbin last. But we sure know that he should be safe in doing so, so frightened though he might be, he should be, should be alright with this. Let's get this a little bit more optimized. I need to... Uh, the problem with the, using the scroll wheel anyway is that... Uh, I really can't... Yeah, I, I don't understand how the scroll wheel thing works. Uh, it seems to give me unpredictable amounts of change depending on how I scroll and it's not working out very well. No, I still want it a little bit higher than that. Um, yeah, I guess I can deal with that. And also the other problem with the scroll wheel is that uh, the need to go back and forth between this. I think there's a way to freeze this. I don't know. I think there's a way to keep it showing the periapsis, but I got to toy around with that right now. Well, it's like double clicking on it or something like that, but that seems to be a recipe for bad things happening, like completely losing the maneuver, stuff like that. Um, okay, somewhat orange tint, and time warp 30 minutes, please. Okay, let's start burning. Okay, there we go. Didn't give me a check mark for that one, but that's what I wanted. Okay, and we get to follow him in this time, instead of uh, switching to another mission and doing everything else in the meantime. So, let's get out of the sphere of influence. Harbury Kerman enjoying a magnificent view of his own home planet. Uh, but we're going on to the dark side here. Let's orient properly. Should we see which is our lit side here? I think uh, this side. So let's. Let's rotate so that we can see the planet as well as the vessel. Well, not much to see there actually. Once we get bigger craft, I'll I'll be more willing to put more lights. But right now, putting more lights, they they all look very, shall we say, draggy. They uh, poke out, and I don't like that. Not in keeping with my design preferences. So. Okay. Let me burn off the remainder of our fuel. Okay. I think it should be fine to dump the service module here. Ooh, come on. God. So much reaction will power in this little pod. Well, looks like we're going to be on the dark side, but that's that's just that. Flame effects, hopefully. 
some point. Maybe. Get some color on this thing. Well, there it is, sort of, kind of. And... Parachutes. Okay, parachutes open. Okay, and Harbury is down. Let's recover vessel. And we can add 250 signs to our total. And so... I think it's time for a trip to the R&D Center after this successful set of three missions. Now, the phrase, don't spin it all in one place, sort of uh, rings a bell here. I really want that claw. And I don't want to look up where it is, because that's just not right. But... Ion engines have been uh, super powered now. So that's a thing. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna eventually have to build bigger rockets, aren't I? So let's let's focus on going this route. Fill that part out in. Oh, those are the new SRVs. Can I say how disappointed I am that they didn't bother put putting reasonable SRVs in this thing? Uh, let's let's be clear. If we were going to put the SRBs that would be on the on the actual uh, SLS, uh, the NASA Space Launch System, uh, their thrust would be around six thousand, not six hundred and fifty. The SRBs in this game are totally nerfed. Uh, they are way they they are completely useless. They have low ISP and they don't make up for it in Magnificent Thrust, which of course is the whole point of an SRB, is to have a uh, super thrust. And and yeah, we just don't have that. And I mean, we, we are lacking in SRB thrust to a, an absurd degree. It's just uh, amazing how how bad it is. But yeah, that's, that's just one little pet peeve of mine. I suppose we'll have to go for these. Um, we do want to eventually get to bigger and better things after all. Oh, and there there they are. Should we get them this time already? Fuel lines are important. Let's get fuel lines. Come on, grabby thing. Um, three person capsules. Advanced S uh, SAS is a good thing. These tanks are nice. The adapter is important. Okay, well, let's let's just fill things out. As usual, aircraft don't seem to be very useful. So I'll just give that a pass. I guess we'll uh, grab the barometer. Rover stuff. Rover stuff is cool, but we, we're very focused on the whole asteroid situation. Advanced grabbing unit! That's the one! Yes! We now have the ability to grab things. Oh, this is so dangerous. Okay. Alright, well then. Well, I don't see any reason not to go whole hog with it and go with heavier rocketry. Maybe we should get a... This lander... See, uh, now that's a tricky thing. Because this lander can is very important. It'll let us uh, attach the the advanced grabbing unit on top of it, right? So, uh, there's no way we can use the crew capsule and do that. Uh, we could always use a probe part. And I think we... Have we uh, gotten a decent probe part for that yet? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, no. It's just a stay putnik, huh? The Stay Putnik isn't good enough because obviously it doesn't have any uh, flat surface on top. It won't let me attach anything to the top. So... So where is the other probe part, the flat one? That might be uh, further on? Or am I just missing it? I think it's further on. 
which means that this is very important. Did I get ions yet? Ions are very important too. If we're going to meet up with an asteroid. These are tempting, but ha perhaps not essential. Not that we, not now we have everything else. And they said, you know, we've got joint reinforcements, so do we need a red tank? When we've got a lot of these? Don't think so. It's really just this one that I want. Well, but I mean, the, uh, then the only reason I want it is because I don't think we have any ability to attach. See, there's one of the flat probe cores, and another one. Just searching for probe cores here, folks. Yeah, it won't be so soon. We never get those quickly. Okay, so yeah, just to attach the grappling thing to something, we'll need this lander can, I think. So I, I have to research that first. What's this one? Oh, the launch escape system. Fun times. All right, I think we're all set. We, we're set to do some serious asteroid work here. So uh, look forward to that in the next episode. Unless uh, uh, we might also need to launch a mission to get the remaining science for this one. So it de depend. We'll we'll try things out. We'll see whether our uh, our uh, skipper is good enough to boost a sufficient mission to an asteroid. We'll see about that. All right. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.